You know, co-host, this is a future where time is currency. You know, no, no more dollars. Is it? okay? No, yeah. No, no more coins. Mm-hmm. You, you, everything is sold through time. And I wish that that was true for real life because this movie owes me some time. <laughs> I was about to say <laughs> my goddamn time yeah, back. This movie should have been called "Waste of Motherfucking Time." <laughs> and the thing is, you're right. Time does does fucking cost you something because it <laughs> cost me some fucking money having to go see this last night. I like the way and you a say midnight this. movie man is bullshit hour. <laughs> I know, I know. At, at midnight too. Yeah. Damn boy, y'all owe me some time. Major back. I like the way you say that it should be uh, named not just "Waste of Time" but "Waste of Motherfucking Time." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to get your point across. <laughs> it, 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 it really, it really does. It deserves that title. <laughs> yeah, man. This is a future where at the age of 25, they've developed it to the point where you, your genes stop you from aging. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you some somehow that's never explained. But. It's never really explained. I guess they say, well, that's not important. But on top of that, but, you know, it seems like everything is cured. It seems like your acne's gone. Mm-hmm. You know, you you grow stubble just in the right way. <laughs> yeah. You don't have any pimples on your ass anymore? No, no, no. no. I, I don't think there's obesity except for that one fat guy in the movie who just couldn't stop eating, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and then, uh, and you know, you're thinking to yourself, all right, well, you know, at this point, what's wrong here? It's like I, I stayed young and I stayed pretty. What's the drawback? Well, the drawback here is that you, in a year, you're dead. You know, I mean, if you can't right. you can't live forever, it's like, hey, you, you you know, it's good enough that you're staying young and pretty. We can't have you just sticking around. Otherwise, <laughs> the world will be overpopulated. So mm. you get a year after your 25th birthday to live. Now, you can stay alive longer, but you have to earn that time. You know, you have to go out and get a job. Mm. You have to pay taxes. You have to, like, I, I don't know, whatever you have to do to get that money, that's how long you stay alive. Or you got to, like, borrow some off your friend. Which is, uh, you know, that, that's that's the problem with this whole premise because I'm like, okay, so you get a, what, what you get a year after 25, yeah. For what reasons? I mean, well, why why don't they just give you 26 years of life? <laughs> They're gonna give you an extra year anyway. That makes sense. It's like <laughs> yeah. if they need you to die, why don't they just give you the amount of time it would take for you to get old in the first place? Yeah. Like let's just say, you know, around 65 or 70, mm-hmm. you. At that point, you know, you maybe you want to die. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I think around like at least uh, for the guys, maybe about forty. For the girls, about thirty. Usually, <laughs> usually that's when you hit the wall, right? When you're a girl, when you oh, that what die. it is. Yeah, you, yeah. So you know, so get around, five more years yeah, after so that to save, get out of there. Yeah. So you save some money on Botox and all that other bullshit <laughs> you're gonna eventually do to yourself. Yeah, it would make more sense if somebody came in with that kind of logic when they were developing the script. Yeah, which yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. I mean, you got to you got to go you got to dump the, jump through a lot of hurdles to buy this premise to begin with yeah yeah i, I like the idea but the the execution has just a lot of questions involved mm, around oh yeah it. and so the story here involves uh justin timberlake now you oh, know yeah. justin timberlake he, he brought sexy back so why mm-hmm. he, he would fit perfectly here right <laughs> yeah but, uh, yeah he, he, he would but uh he brought it back too hard though yeah. because cause everybody's sexy in this uh-huh. world yeah everyone and, is sexy which is annoying but so yeah you know it don't it don't matter there was a time when sexy would get you somewhere mm-hmm. but in this world he's just a working stiff just like everybody else mm-hmm. and on top of that he lives in the ghetto. <laughs> yeah. now, his character's name is Will Solace, and Will, he 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 is a guy. You know, he's a he's a poor man working hard to earn his time. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, you know, he goes to a factory job every day, tries to come home and take care of his mother. And this world that they live in now, like we said, you gotta you gotta push people along. You gotta have people die at some point. So they they try to hurry that up. They what they do is if you are not part of the the rich and wealthy elite who can just pretty much afford to probably live for eternity, you know, mm-hmm. or for eons. Yeah. Uh, you'll be immortal. If you're not one of those lucky people, then you uh, have to go out and pay, like I say, you have to pay taxes. And if you want to borrow to get more time, you want to get a loan, then they have interest rates on that. And they raise those things high on the poor. Yeah, and it doesn't help when the cost of living is also raised. Yeah, so yeah, your uh, your sexy ass, you know, you don't you don't have a lot of time to hang around and be sexy. You know? No, no, you got that's the thing, Eric. Yeah. If you're poor, you got to rush. Everything mm-hmm. has to be fast because you ain't got that long to live. Now, Will sees all this going on, and when the time comes early on the movie when he can't save his mother because her clock runs out, mm-hmm. then. He decides to take it upon him. And by the way, his mother's played by Olivia Wilde. Um, he decides to take it upon himself to start this crusade to break the system. 
Mm-hmm. You know, this whole thing of people having to earn their time and poor people not getting that chance to earn it before they die at an early stage. He's not with it. He's like, I'm going to change everything. So he just soon becomes this Robin Hood. Robin Hood of, of time. Of time. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, there's, there's, there's something, I guess, that, you know, I, I can wrap my brain around. Uh, but from the get-go, this, this premise gets a little shaky, and it, get, and it gets a little unsettling. Because uh, as soon as we start with the movie, we see Justin Timberla- Timberlake hanging out with uh, Olivia Wilde, who, if you can't remember, she's a hot, hot fucking chick in Tron. Yes. And there are scenes with these two that are borderline almost incestuous. Because, I mean, wow, she is fucking hot to begin with, but every time they have a reaction shot with Justin Timberlake, he looks like he's ready just to fuck his mom. I mean, he yeah. looks like... <laughs> and you know what? I can't say my, I blame him. I'd be the ultimate motherfucker if I had a mom looking like, like fucking Tron chick. You yeah, know? <laughs> because the, the, the movie opens up with him walking out of the bedroom, mm-hmm. walking into the kitchen... And you see Olivia Wilde, hi, honey. And then Justin Timberlake grabs her by the waist, starts looking into her eyes. They pull back the shot. She's not wearing like a nightgown and some old, you know, bunny slippers or something. Yeah. No, she's wearing like a nightie. That yeah. thing is like just barely below her ass cheeks. Yeah. And, and, then, and then he goes, hi, mom. Oh, yeah, no, hi, like, mom. What, like, what? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> and even that look on his face, it's not like, hey, mom. It's like. Hey, mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, you know, Justin Timberlake had a heart on that scene. It's oh, like, no matter how many takes they did, he could not be convincing as her Every son. guy in the fucking theater had a heart on watching that oh, scene. Oh, yeah. And when you realize it's his mother, you're like, oh, shit. This is the, this is the type of shit I shouldn't be watching on the internet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's that That's a that's a big flaw in the movie. But, mm-hmm. you know, another thing that's weird about the film is that they want you to buy certain relationships. And the way they cast this movie, it just doesn't happen. Uh, it turns out, that in this film, in order for Justin Timberlake's character to achieve his goals, he has to mingle with the rich folks. Mm-hmm. And he has to, uh, he, he hooks up with this guy who has a monopoly on this town and time. He would be the equivalent of a, of a mogul, a rich guy, mm-hmm. except he has like years and years and years yeah. of time to live. He's Donald Trump. But he, he's a Donald young, Trump, but, of, but of, young and uh, <laughs> kind of. Decent looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> his hair don't look as crazy. <laughs> uh, no, his uh, it's a guy named Philip Weiss, played by Benson uh, Cathesar. And I think that's how you say his name, Cathesar. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and this guy, he, you know, he has mansions. He has a beautiful wife, a beautiful daughter, played by Amanda Seyfried. And when Justin Timberlake starts uh, mingling with these people, they kind of take him in as, the, uh, as their own. Hey, you, you're part of the elite. You're part of us. Mm-hmm. But before... They, he had all this time. That time was taken from a guy who is just wandering around the city, flashing around his time to everybody. And all these gangsters in the ghetto see this stranger. And, of course, you know, they're going to rob this guy and mm-hmm. kill him. And Justin Timberlake sees this, saves the guy, and and then uh, asks the guy, like, what's wrong with you? And the guy's like, look, man, I got uh, thousands of years of time. I've lived so long, like, I don't care how young and pretty I am. My, my mind can't fucking take it no more. Yeah, I can't, you know, you, there's a point where you want to die. I've just run out of shit to do. Yeah. I've, seen every, I've seen every goddamn movie, read every goddamn comic book. I am bored. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to check out. Yeah, unless you can just launch my ass off into space or something, you know. I, I've done it all on this planet right here. Yeah. Unless you can, like, introduce me to God, yeah, you know, I've which, seen, uh, yeah. which I'm about to do myself. You know? I've seen every goddamn naked picture on the internet. God damn. Yeah. Yeah, at that point, you've eaten every food. Yeah. You've gone to every. You've ridden every roller coaster. Uh-huh. You've jacked off to every uh, picture out there. You know, there's nothing else to do. This guy's. I've done it all, man. I've got to go. Mm-hmm. And before he leaves, though, when Justin Timberlake is asleep, he gives him. He he transfers his time to him and says, "Do not waste my time." Of course, mm-hmm. the time police in this future, led by Killian Murphy, uh, they say, "You know what? You mean to tell me that a guy who can live forever?" just all of a sudden decides he wants to die and he gives you his time. No, you son of a bitch. You stole that from me. You killed the guy. You stole it. So he's on the run. He's mingling with these rich people. They find him with these rich folks. And, hey, lo and behold, I'm hanging out with a rich daughter. You know what? I'm going to kidnap her ass. I'm going to get a hostage. And now they have to let me live. Mm -hmm. So while they're running on the loose, Amanda Seyfried and Justin Timberlake, while they're at large, they try to build them up as – Sort of a Bonnie and a Bonnie and Clyde of time. They're supposed to be on the run, but they're supposed to have like this romantic budding relationship. 
And did you buy that at all? Fuck no. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, they they, they do turn into a Bonnie and Clyde situation with Jean Claude Van Damme chasing them. Uh, <laughs> time you know, cop. I mean, the time. Yeah, time <laughs> cop. Everything was so force fed to you. Like I never understood. Like okay. Why is he helping this guy who's just hanging out in a bar where you you don't even know anything about him? He just looks at this guy hanging out in a bar like he like he also wants to fuck him, and <laughs> he obviously knows some guys are gonna go and fucking you know jack him up for his time, and he just decides out of the out of the blue pretty much to help the guy. There's a lot of motivation in this. Yeah, there's a lot of motivation in this movie that's just not understood. Not at all. I mean, especially and especially when he hooks up with Amanda Seyfried, where it just kind of happens. Because I, I, I was like wondering, did I did I fucking pass out and miss something here because i don't understand why they're hanging out with each other really they, well i mean he kidnapped her but mm -hmm. what did this romantic interest where she's acting so cold to him mm -hmm. you know an hour earlier and now she's well i don't know i guess like i said you know when people run out of time they gotta act fast <laughs> yeah, I know. And, she, and, and she no time for romantic and, development and she here. definitely did because i swear to god it, it felt like i was missing a reel or something did something happen between these two that to make amanda Seyfried like all of a sudden interested in him besides me just knowing that it's the fucking guy from that boy band yeah. that she fucking just fell in love with the old crush of hers or something well, <laughs> I guess we could use the excuse she had you know when she gets kidnapped somehow through circumstances she only has an hour left before she dies and I I guess you could say she I better get my fuck on before I, <laughs> yeah. before my hour is up but <laughs> nevertheless I it's they didn't do it convincingly no not at all and here's another thing man my man Justin Timberlake all right the way he's the way he earns more time in this movie with like he has a lot of it from this guy but there's mm -hmm. another point where he gets even more time from these rich folks by gambling mm -hmm. now when we see him in the in early on the movie this dude like i said he's working in a factory mm -hmm. an old dirty ass jumpsuit <laughs> yeah. i mean he's clocking in and out and going home mm -hmm. drinking a beer you know <laughs> feeling up on his mom and everything yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden when he starts to mingle with the rich people He's James Bond. Yeah. Like he can play, like he sits down to a poker game with this guy, uh, uh, whatever his name is, Walter Weiss, Willy, Willy Wonka, whatever his name is, Philip Weiss. And uh -huh. all of a sudden he can play poker like, he, like, he, like he's in Casino Royale or yeah. something. And I'm like, if this son of a bitch was so good at poker and can win money like this, like just thousands and thousands of years of time, why wasn't he gambling like this before? No shit. Yeah, oh, that, that's that's what I was thinking. We see poker tournaments all the time on TV <laughs> yeah. where people come from the trailer park and do this shit. You yeah, know? And, and there's no struggle in that scene with him trying to like even have a poker face or anything. It's just he just looks in there, gives a fucking glance, and he won. I know <laughs> yeah. that fool is almost like connect four. I, I win. Know. You know? <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Pretty sneaky. <sis. laughs> yeah. And that fool, yeah, and in the biggest. The biggest drawback of this movie that I found unconvincing is that, okay, this guy's in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about the slums. And this shit is just as clean and nice. Ain't a piece of paper flowing around anywhere. I, I, Ain't no yeah. graffiti on the wall. And no black people anywhere. <laughs> well, there's about two, you know, and the same two black people you see walking around the background. And you mentioned this earlier yeah. that... That's you know the the place looks unpopulated too. It completely does, and that and that's another thing. Like uh, we talked about, it it doesn't it doesn't sell you on this world of the future because I'm like, okay, obviously people have to die like around twenty five, twenty six, just so I guess there won't be any kind of overpopulation. But there's no fucking population to begin with. It's like <laughs> what, whatever this fucking brilliant idea was to implement this idea where people died at a certain time. It's already worked. It's as worked <laughs> as you can. Po it worked too much, you know. So where you got you got every scene. You see only about three people crossing the street. And yeah. They're like, where the fuck is everybody? I mean, really, where the fuck is everybody? And, and how come? Yeah. And, and why? Why? Why is this fucking street so goddamn clean? And maybe if they had more time, they could have time to get some construction workers to build some shit that looks like it's from the future instead of some fucking warehouse district that oh, they yeah. just found just to fucking film a movie that's another thing it, yeah. it doesn't feel futuristic at all no nothing i mean every now and then they got a car that says you know that's, yeah. <laughs> they that, got that. that's and, about it you yeah, know? And, and they got a fucking glow-in-the-dark timex watch like completely uh, oh, covering yeah. the forearm of every person where i'm like okay how much money does that cost to keep that shit lit up like that and, and how does that shit work? That's how, yeah. like some hardcore how you, technology. Yeah, how do you You're born around? with that shit? You were born with a neon green stopwatch yeah. in your arm, you know? I guess that's futuristic too, but it's, mm -hmm. but you want your city to look futuristic. Mm -hmm. It looks like they shot these scenes 
on one street, mostly during the day, mm-hmm. and it's the cleanest part of town. They could have no, shot man, it. They shot that shit on Martin Luther King Boulevard, right over there in the warehouse district where there ain't nobody around there. <laughs> shit, it looked like they shot that. It looked like a place where hipsters take over. You know, it, they, they, if that's the ghetto, the hipsters came in and gentrified mm-hmm. that shit a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. and, and like I said, it's supposed to be slums. There's nothing slummy about it. I know these people are supposed to be young and they're not going to age past 25, but make them, you know, it's not hard to give them like a five o'clock shadow or I don't know, hair all messed up or something. Give yeah. them some, give, I don't know, put some gold chains on people or yeah. something. I don't and, and, know. You know and, and the thing put is, jumpsuits on people or something. So, something. Uh, the other thing is, okay, like Olivia Wilde, her character is supposed to be like, what, 50 years old, I think? Yeah. Is, is that what she said? And my problem with some of these characters that are like that is, they don't give you any idea that they're actually 50 years, 50 years old. They really don't act the age. Uh, and I think that's a big problem with the script. Like, especially like the tycoon who has all this time doesn't really necessarily convince me that he's old. Just because the way they're kind of underwritten, this dialogue doesn't seem like it's coming from an old person. It seems like it's coming from a person who just <laughs> fucking stepped off the goddamn high school drama class. Okay, man. see, I agree with you completely on that. Mm-hmm. I think that this movie suffers from only having, first of all, being miscast mm-hmm. because your lead role, Justin Timberlake, he just doesn't seem like, he doesn't seem to fit this role. Like this guy who's on the run, who's... Uh, tormented by the society and what's happening who has now <clears throat> all this responsibility and danger that cast upon him because he has to like somehow save the world doesn't seem like that no. he seems like he, he seems like a guy who's young and happy go lucky through this mm-hmm. even in the most dangerous and urgent parts of the film he's smuggling through most of these intense scenes oh, yeah and then he's put cast in this relationship with, with Amanda Seyfried that's not convincing and then even bigger than that I think that if you want to make a movie like this where you have young people who have to like play older people, you need to kind of pull back and center on more stars. I think this movie could have like helped from having a lot more big name actors mm-hmm. because a lot of the people in this movie are either lesser known actors or they seem like extras with a few extra talking parts. Yeah, I mm-hmm. mean, and, and when they do that. These kids seem like they, they, they do. They seem like they're straight out of a high school play. Yeah. Like the, you have security guards in this movie. You have people who are protecting the, the tycoon in this film. You have FBI agents. You have police officers. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't help that all the men in the movie are, are like real slender or thin and androgynous looking. It's like <laughs> they look like a bunch of like fucking chicks, man. Like <laughs> yeah. what happened to the real man in this world? We don't have no guys that are like built and big to make us feel like they are authority figures like god damn you know Arnold Schwarzenegger was like yeah. Mr. Universe around that time yeah. wasn't he it's like, there's no threat on. there's no real threat and, and the greatest example of that is uh, Killian Murphy who seems to be the only one like really trying this movie where I kind of felt bad for him I'm like man dude I guess I guess you really you along with the rest of the cast got really sold on this premise but when you looked at the script they really didn't give you anything to do besides Chase, chase fucking Justin Timberlake and his girlfriend and uh, point a gun every once in a while and drive a fast car because he is so one-dimensional that it's sad. But the thing is, he has, like, backup, where his backup, when these guys are around him and they actually act with him, it's like, these guys don't convince me that they're cops of any kind. That's what they, I'm saying. They, 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 they remind me, like, of uh, fucking crosswalking guards that, you know, get a position and they really want to act the part so they, <laughs> they puff out their chest a little bit. But I'm sorry, I'm still not convinced you have any kind of real authority at all. Yeah, I, you know, and it doesn't help that the police in this movie they don't wear uniforms. It looks like they all been shopping at the Gap. <laughs> you know, it's like no, no. They they look like they fucking went to Goodwill to try to shop like they were at the Gap, <laughs> and they just found whatever fucking shit was floating around. Oh, look, a leather jacket. Well, yeah, there's only one of them, guys. The rest of you guys can wear. Have, well, you can have to wear something else. Yeah, yeah. It looked like they told the actors, okay. Just bring what you got in the closet at home. You know? Yeah, that's what it's hey, like. Hey, kids, you're young in here. Yeah. Wear something that looks. Wear something that's all black that says authority, but you know you don't have to match. Yeah, <laughs> like, come on, man. Damn, it's like yeah. a it's like a poor man's goodwill version of the Matrix. Yeah, I mean, it, really, it really did. I mean, because yeah, like fucking uh, Justin Timberlake's running around. Like first, I'm supposed to believe like he's living in the ghetto, and then the motherfucker knows how to dress all of a sudden. All of a sudden, yeah. All of a sudden, he's stylish. He's GQ. Yeah. And yeah, it's funny because you had me laughing about this, man. Mm. You said that they're living in the slums. There's only one guy that looked like he he took it upon himself to try to look poor. <laughs> uh, the guy from The Big Bang Theory, Johnny Galecki. Mm-hmm. You recognize him if you watch that show. Now, on The Big Bang Theory, he's he's like clean, he's nerdy, mm-hmm. you know, but at least he looks presentable. Yeah. 
in this movie, he looked like he read the script. Now, you were saying it like he read the script and said, oh, this takes place in the ghetto. Well, yeah. you know what? I'm going to grow my beard out a little bit. I'm going <laughs> to make my hair real greasy. I'm yeah. going to wear a tank top. He's you know? the only one who paid attention to the script. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Uh, uh, you know what? It's in the ghetto, so I should look the part. I should look like I fucking live in the ghetto. Like I can't afford fucking a, a razor blade. And, yeah. yeah and, and the thing is, is that his character is introduced early in the film when you're thinking, okay, maybe he'll be a, a big pick character. And then he is completely just written out of the story. You don't see him ever again. Yeah. And I think that's due to the fact that he was like, no, man, I live in the ghetto. This is how I'm supposed to look. No, no, no. You got to look like Justin Timberlake over there. Yeah. Like, you're, you're about to go dance and sing. He's like, no, no, you're not doing justice to the script. All right, you're fired. All right, get the fuck out of here. Who's that ugly man right yeah, there? Get his dirty ass off my set. Hey, man, I'm playing the part right now. <laughs> I'm trying to make good cinema. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's up, and I can't. I hate. I hate to keep harping on this ghetto, but this mm-hmm. is the most unconvincing ghetto I've ever seen in a movie. Mm-hmm. To the point where the biggest gangster in the movie, for some reason, is a is a dapper British dude. You know, he's, <laughs> yeah. they don't explain it. Nobody else no. is British around here. This is supposed to be the ghetto, and he gets out of his car talking about tell the hell, people, good day. <laughs> Give me your time right now. Give it to I me will now. Shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll slap you with my glove. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is the most unthreatening person where I'm like, wow. I mean, did anybody bother to read like this guy's like lines and what he what actually he's here to do? Yeah. So I'm like, look, you, you're not threat. If you're British, you're not threatening unless you're hanging out with Darth Vader. All right. Yeah, exactly. Because I, 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 any other way, I, you know, you, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to have a lot of convincing that you're some kind of threat. But it seems like he was just like, all right, we need like a school bully. Let's just cast this guy. Let's just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to be racist here, but I think that if you're in the ghetto and you got a gangster, I like my old fashioned big black scary gangsters, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, some Chicano or Hispanics. I mean, you know, some like, yeah, yeah. I, I hate to be that way. I'm not yeah. trying to put, you know, no, uh, no. people down. Hey, look, look, paint that motherfucker. Yeah, Do yeah. something to convince me that he's supposed to be threatening. I ain't never seen the power. Now I know why we got stereotypes. You know? know. There is a reason for it. Because you put this British dude, I don't know if they're trying to advance or go yeah. beyond stereotypes and I'd be offensive, but when you got goddamn <laughs> Harry Potter running through the ghetto yeah. talking about I'm a gangster, <laughs> like he just walked out of a Guy Ritchie film, I'm like, no. No, You're no. absolutely right. This is another. This is another case when being PC goes horribly wrong. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I call me racist, but, but put a big old threatening Negro in there with yeah. some gold teeth in there. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'll let I'm that slide. Scared, right? yeah. <laughs> I'll let that go. Yeah. You know? The thing I do disagree with you on about people playing the certain parts where they're supposed to be older. Mm-hmm. Uh, Olivia Wilde. I mean, today, I'm looking at people who are 50. Olivia Wilde is definitely over 25. Mm. And I look at her in the movie, I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know when your clock stopped, but it didn't <laughs> stop at 25. It stopped somewhere <laughs> around 30-something. But today, we got 50-year-old women who are kind of sexy and everything. So I'm just like, you know, if they had made her, her his grandmother or something, mm. I would probably maybe be a little more convinced or unconvinced. But mm. anyway, the way she acted, I don't know what it was. Because she just kind of looked just a little bit older. I'm like, I can buy that. She, You know, she was too busy, like, looking too goddamn hot. That's because, what it was. Uh, because, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Dress her up in a fucking muumu or, or cast somebody else <laughs> who just isn't fucking pretty, you know? Put some, yeah, boy, have her wake up with some rollers in her hair or something, you know? <laughs> I, was la- I was laughing about how the, at the beginning of the movie, like, she she's about to run out of time herself. And nobody wants to help this chick. As soon as a guy, like, as soon as somebody sees her, it's like she's the walking fucking dead. People start running in their fucking houses, start slamming the door on her. A truck driver stop, comes by. She's waving her hands. And and a, a, this motherfucker don't even stop for Olivia well, fucking Olivia Wilde. Wild, man. It's like, a truck man? driver? Really? Yeah, I'm like, I, that's the, come on. That, come on. Yeah, you know, Adam, okay, I'm sorry. That's the most unbelievable thing yeah, in the movie. I, I said, film, you lost me. <laughs> yeah, I'm that. from there, you, you jump whatever time shark is in this yeah. movie. <laughs> um, but the other person I found convincing as far as just seeming somebody who was a little wise and a little older was Vincent C- Cathiser. I, I, that guy, I don't know what it was about him. Maybe it was acting that was, was better than everybody else. I don't mm-hmm. know. But maybe, you know, in the movie, he's supposed to be somebody who's 80 years old. And I'm like, okay, maybe I don't buy 80, but I do buy you as being older than everybody else in this mm-hmm. world. And I, I'm, I'm a little bit convinced or maybe it's just the way he looked. For some reason, they had his ass looking old. Because if you notice, his lips were red through the whole movie. Yeah. And he looked like, tell me if you didn't think this. Like, if you drew two lines down the, the side of his lips, uh, uh, down past his jaw, tell me he wouldn't look like a ventriloquist dummy. Oh, he would. Yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. Got, yeah, that is ass looking like yeah, Charlie McCartney in this movie. Or something, you know? <laughs> if, maybe if they had him go, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every every time like this. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe people vocal cords aged in this yeah. movie or something. I, I can be more. But I did like him in the film. Now, there's some things that I did like about the film that not enough to make it a good movie, but they had some ideas that worked for brief moments. Mm-hmm. Um, again, going back to this character of Philip Weiss, he, you know, there's a point in the movie where I like what they did with the concept. It was, he was talking about, yeah, you know, I know you're sitting here with me and you're looking at this girl over here who's associated with me and you're probably wondering, okay, is this my daughter? Is this my sister? Is this my wife? Is this my cousin? You know, is, my, yeah. is this my auntie? You know, <laughs> you know and he's like, and, and he says, this is my dog. <laughs> my dog, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dogs even look pretty. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so he was like, hey, it used to be a much simpler time, didn't it, when those, when those lines were well-defined. Now today it's a little more confusing. And I was like, yeah, you got goddamn right it is, you know? <laughs> I was like, everybody be fucking everybody in this future. <laughs> confusing times. Is she my mother, my sister, my daughter? You're hoping she's not my wife. Things used to be simpler once, so I'm told. Very beautiful. Daughter. She does look a lot like my wife. Sylvia? Will Salas. Congratulations, Mr. Salas. You've taken years off my father's life. Which is normally what you do. Isn't that right, my darling? We're having a party tomorrow night. Perhaps you'll give him a chance to win back some of those years. I'd love to. And I like that concept right there. And... Another thing that I like is that they did have about two or three moments where you felt time running down on people. It's like I, I didn't find it convincing in the story itself, but for certain scenes when people had to get, you know, they, they had like that their life was ticking away. Mm-hmm. And there was just a small sen- sense of suspense there for me. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, brief moments. It wasn't enough to carry the movie. That's what I was disappointed about. I was like, yeah. if I think there's areas they could have developed and ideas they could have elaborated on that would have made this concept a lot better if they had just thought it through in a better story and i think there's some good ideas here because the director put some of these ideas similar to something like this to use in another film which explains why the movie's so clean looking too we were, we were talking about this uh andrew nickel did gattaca right and that was another sci-fi film that was kind of light on the sci-fi appearance it mm-hmm. kind of resembled more a very sterilized version of our world but that story was a little bit better. It was way better. Yeah, it looked like well, it had well, more well, budget it, to it. Better executed. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it's like leaps and bounds better than this. I couldn't buy any of the suspense dealing with the time, only because I thought it was dealt with so poor, poorly. And when people fucking died, I mean, it was about the equivalent of seeing Mr. Hanky die, or it's just like, eh. Yeah. And, or, it's like somebody like <laughs> shoving a finger up your asshole, and you go, oh, and then you're dead. I mean, it, I, just, I just, it was so quick and so just... Like, it felt to me like wow, this is like this is something they teach you not to do when you die in acting class. Well, that was funny. And I could not buy it. When you die in this movie, <laughs> not only do you, I mean, not only do you do like that that old cliche thing of, uh, but but your ass goes out like Michael Jackson. You 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 flip your head back. You stand on those toes. You throw your arms up in the air. In the air. And I th- I think even throw out like a little, and then, and then your ass falls over. And that's funny because in this in all these streets in this very clean sterilized ghetto, not a piece of paper or anything littered on the floor. But there's pretty dead bodies everywhere. Nobody bothered to pick up whatsoever. No, I'm, I'm like, dude, they they must have a fucking guy with a with a wheelbarrow going up. I'm here to pick up. Your dad, yeah. bring out, bring out your, your dad. dad. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, where's Woodsy Allen in this I world? Yeah. That, God damn, somebody give a hoot. I know. Don't pollute with all these dead, pretty bodies everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, uh, is that Joe? Yeah. Oh, Fuck. Well. I guess I'm gonna have to take hey. take care of his share of the work today. Yeah, I guess everybody's just like that dead body man. I got about two hours left in my life. Yeah. I gotta go to work. <laughs> Shit. Better him than me. <laughs> Fuck. <him. laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, man. I know what you're probably gonna say, and I can't wait to hear it. Mm. I, I I think I'm gonna probably I'm just gonna be safe here. You tell me. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little softer on this movie because I like that. Like I said, there's this there's a few hints of things that I liked. Uh, th- but the movie is a low rental for a movie like this where it's all about people rushing because they're running out of time. I would it, it, those people who are living the world of this movie. I would say go see this movie because this movie drags out its time <laughs> yeah. so much. It's, it is so it it, is, it just suffers from being dull. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's a boring film. It, it would a with an interesting concept, and that's the biggest crime that this movie commits. So yeah, I'm giving this like a very low rental. 
Oh, man. Okay, well, you said it. It is fucking boring. And anything that bores me to death, especially with a sci-fi type concept of like this, I mean, fuck. You know, take some more time on that goddamn script. Develop your characters. Give me a reason to give a shit. Give me a reason to care about this guy's motivation to all of a sudden want to do what he wants to do. And uh, what makes you so fucking special that this didn't happen to anybody else to give them the same motivation that you're having right now? Yeah. After all these fucking Talk years. About for Justin Timberlake. Yeah, Justin Timberlake's character. I just could not buy it. You know, with a movie like this, especially with its concept where it could be easily laughable, which in this case it is, I look at a movie like Equilib- Equilibrium mm-hmm. that did it so right, where they had the sterile look. They had a guy who all of a sudden he had a, he had a change in him and his character to motivate him to. To do hit do something about the society he was living in and it fucking worked because you know what they had fucking gun kata and this they don't got none of that shit <laughs> they, and there's a they, bunch of yeah. they got they ain't got, <laughs> they ain't got time for they ain't got time for none of that they, they fucking they, what what do they do they smug they smug at the camera look at each other with dreamy eyes half the time and you got Killian Murphy running around trying to chase fucking somebody who's never there. I, yeah. I just could not buy it and yeah it was slow it fucking dragged and you know what this would have worked better as a short film, and I'm talking about a five, ten minute short film, and that is fucking it. And be done with the premise and do something worth the shit. I mean, this director wasted my fucking time, and that is the biggest crime, all right? So, yeah, l- learn how to manage your time better, all right? So, learn how to manage yeah. your time no, better. This, exactly, because this, this is some old bullshit, yes. Wow. Some deep old bullshit. Some deep bullshit, <laughs> like, like you need deep in that bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what, man? Look. I, I I do understand because I'm almost there with you. I'm right mm-hmm. behind you. That whole thing you said about Olivia Wilde, I mean, there's a scene in the movie where they got me. First of all, speaking of Olivia Wilde and Justin Timberlake, I, I hate to say this. Mm-hmm. I hate to say this, but if, it's, if it was a world like this where everybody was this pretty and my mom looks like something like Olivia Wilde, my, mm-hmm. all, all the women in my life look like that. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'd be fucking sisters. <laughs> oh, my mom, my mom, my aunt. I'd be, you know, <laughs> shit. I'd be fucking everybody in my family. We would be the most retarded family on the block because oh I don't, God. I wouldn't care. I'm sorry, everybody's pretty. <laughs> your, your family, your family reunion would look like an Apex Twin video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our family reunion would look like the, would, would, would look like the, the Austin State School. You know? <laughs> and uh, and then, and, and shit, my family would look like Arkham Asylum. Up in <laughs> and then this whole thing. There's a scene in this movie, man. I just got to illustrate. I don't want to spoil anybody on this movie, but I got to tell you something. Mm-hmm. There's a scene where Olivia Wilde has to meet her son, Justin Timberlake, in the movie because mm-hmm. she has a birthday party that she wants to celebrate. Now, in the movie, she she has two hours left. In, uh, I think, no, an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. An hour and a half left in her time. Now, why they decided not to meet five minutes away from the house <laughs> where, <laughs> where they can save that time, I'll, I'll better yet, like, get some takeout so it can mm-hmm. be brought to the house and they ain't got to waste no time going away. <laughs> I don't know. But for some reason, they wanted to be special. I think because he went all this time, he could pay for it and everything. Mm-hmm. He'd give us some money. Okay, I'll let that slide. But she goes to a bus. And she tells the bus driver, uh, okay, I need to get to like the other end of town. And the guy's like, okay, that's going to be two hours. She looks at our arm and she's like, damn, I only, I only have an hour and a half. That's, that's a two hour walk to where I need to go. And that bus driver said, well, bitch, you better start running. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she runs to the point where she's getting down to like, I, I and, and by the way, I second. guess she ran the whole time, but, yeah. but she never broke a sweat. No, my, not at all. I guess, I guess you stopped sweating after 25, <laughs> yeah. but she, she getting, she's down to like around like about, 10 seconds mm-hmm. it's obvious what's going to happen but I'm thinking to myself okay I'm running my life is ticking away before my eyes mm-hmm. I'll, I'm a hot chick I don't want to be sexist to anybody but you you better believe I'm selling some ass on the way, <laughs> <laughs> on the way. that's why I couldn't believe guys running the house from her because yeah. if she had just Flung them breasts down, flung oh, them yeah. titties down, start Easily. running towards the guy. God, give me some time. <laughs> ask for time. She, ask for time. You better believe. She's Olivia Wilde, but hey, you know what? I guess that bus driver was burned by Tron. I guess that's one motherfucker. I, yeah, that I saw the movie. They yeah. didn't like that movie. I'm sorry. You didn't impress me. <laughs> you fucked up an instant classic. I'm telling you people, if you think I'm being sexist, if I was her, mm-hmm. and I saw my time slipping away like yeah. that, and I'm running down the street, you better believe I'm I'm sucking dick before, <laughs> yeah. before I get to where I got to go. I'm like a crack and I suck. Dick. You, you be sucking that time out of that dick. Oh, yeah. This system doesn't. Yeah, I'll be sucking that. I'll be, I'll be sucking that arm. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the system does not work. This world no. will be full of like mongoloids and venereal diseases. <laughs> but people trying to get that time and fucking their relatives. Please take me home. I can't do that. Why? They're keeping me alive. Yeah, this is my